Guys, I hope you're strapped in, got your spare parts ready, and are keen for some four-wheel drive action, because this episode is going to be one hell of a ride. Well, Sean, mate, mate, I've been to the South Coast before, but you're taking me to an area this trip that you reckon will probably surpass anywhere else in the South Coast you've taken me before. Well, the South Coast is one of the most beautiful parts of Australia. It has some of the toughest tracks in Australia as well. Not a lot of people know about that. In fact, there's a few little secrets I want to share with you boys. We've got a pretty cool crew. We've got Rocket, we've got Chris, we've got Nick. And we've even got Graham. <laughs> I was going to say, we've got people that can drive as well. So we'll see how we go. Mate, tracks galore this yep. way. Yep. I want to show you some sights. Yep. And there are also some good tracks too. I'll tell you what we shouldn't be doing right now, but we are. We're looking like a boy band. Let's break this up and get out of here. Come on. We're starting our adventure in Marilla State Forest, not too far from Nowra, and just under three hours from Sydney. We plan to hit some of the many tracks here and visit a couple of the spectacular lookouts and campsites available in the area before taking on my old favourite, Monkey Gum Fire Trail. I can't wait. Before hitting the tracks, we're doing what any experienced four-wheel drivers would do. We're knocking some air out of our tyres. Now, 18 PSI should do the trick for this terrain around here, which is a mix of clay, rocks, muddy bog holes, deep ruts and steep climbs. Yep, perfect. We've had a bit of rain overnight, so it could make things quite interesting. Let's just see how we go. Hey, Sean, I got a copy up there, mate? Yeah, certainly do, bud. How do you pronounce this state forest? Mar Marilla? Marilla? Marilla, I think, mate. It's very close. A bit of an average between the two things that you just said. Mate, it's like a little hidden gem down here in the south coast. And, um, oh, there's a couple of little ruts here, boys. But um, that's, I suppose, the plan for today is try and uncover a few of these tracks and see where they go. Yeah, I like the concept you come up with. Just a day of exploration, really. Let's just follow the VMS, see what we can find. That's almost uh, getting back to the grassroots of four-wheel driving, isn't it? Just having a bit of a drive around. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to go too deep into the Marilla State Forest before things start to get pretty darn serious. And the track that will eventually get us to camp is no exception. Around here you can see battle wounds from where things haven't gone well for some people. We're really going to need to concentrate here. Looks like it drops off into nothing there mate, what's in front of you? Yeah you pretty much just said it mate, it just drops off to nothing, it looks a little bit rocky and rutted down here too mate and um, a lot of trees so Nick when you're telling that trailer buddy just do your best. Uh, this is a bit you really want to watch out for I'm really off cam and it wants to go towards this tree like you wouldn't believe. Do the magic that you do mate. Yeah, you that tree. So if I didn't flex like a tough truck I'd probably come nowhere near it. <laughs> yeah, that's right you don't flex like a tough truck. <laughs> You can see that we've had just that little sprinkle of rain and it's made this rock face really quite slippery. Can you straighten up a little bit? Like to go your left. <laughs> Rocket Rod though, he is top heavy and that big rig of his does lean over. We're going to have to keep a close eye. I don't like this angle. This really shows the importance of slowing down and taking your time. I don't think I'm going to get past. Had we just sent Rocket straight through here, I guarantee he would have put a dent in that canopy all the way along. Can you shrink your vehicle a bit? Yeah, just a bit. Might, maybe go back and have another bite and do what you said, Rocket. Got a situation here where Rocket's obviously got a big, long, heavy vehicle, and you've got to sort of drive over this rock step, which is of course going to make the vehicle turn into the tree, and that's the last thing you want is to hit this tree. So we're trying to get him back now so we can have another bite of it, get as close to the tree as possible. Nah, no, 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 there's a lot of talk on that. That's you might have to come forward no matter what here. You've, you've sort of got to go that way. Right, I'm go getting out of the way. Oh, he's got to be a long way up here. It's looking good. Oh, 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 oh. Chuck a rock in there. Doing is just building the track up. We want to ideally get that tire to go up in the air. That's going to bring the canopy that way. Inch forward, mate. Well, I can hear you from there, so I'll come down slowly. That's going to work. Look at yeah, that. They built me a bridge. Oh, hang on, so slow. Like. I've There's got inches this. in it. Thank you. Good stuff. I'll tell you what, to steer something like that through there, I've got a 79, I know what it's like. I wouldn't be doing it. It takes, it takes kahunas a sight. That's why he's got a GVM about four tonne, I reckon. He's got to carry certain parts of his body. <laughs> Most trucks just couldn't carry. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I drive a little truck. <laughs> Let's see how Nick goes here with the trailer. Coil springs. Yeah. Flexi yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. Tree. We'll That's see. Interesting angle. Here we go. Come on. Ah, 
Nah, he's going to hit the tree if he does that. Those rocks that we've placed in that hole in order to get rocket through have proved invaluable. And the camper trailer's come down a lot easier than I expected. Oh, that was close. Up over that. <laughs> that lifted you up, that did. Mate, come on down when you're ready. Well done, mate. Well done. Before we even go any further, I just want to show you another little bit. Where? Over there? Yeah, that's why I stopped right there. I can't sleep past your truck, so should we go to Booger? Oh, Was it gnarly? Well, proper gnarly. Like, I'm still I'm scratching. I don't know how to make it work, but we'll, we'll give it a go. Right. <laughs> well, that's, that's the end of the track that way. <laughs> You can get up here, it's still pretty hard. This is proper tough truck country. This is a real obstacle. Now, there's no way we can go back. We have to go forward. I don't know how we're going to go driving this, but there is a line up the main section. This is a proper challenge. All right, someone. <laughs> yeah, I'm going for double lockers. Look out. This is a proper thing. This is an obstacle of consequence. It's big, it's gnarly, it's off camera, it's rocky, it's slippery, it's slopey, it's got everything you'd need to not be able to drive it. I don't want to be defeatist before I've even got to it, but I've got a little bit of experience on my belt, and this is pretty darn gnarly. We're an hour, hour and a half out of Sydney if you get a bit of traffic, but to find, this, look at this, look where Rocket is, to find this out here, I, I don't have words, and yet we go all over the place looking for these gnarly places, the Kimberley, the Cape Arnold, we go all over the place. There's stuff right near your house, we'll give it a go. This is the first real track of the session now. I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit worried about it, but it just looks a lot different when you sit in the driver's seat. It just looks a lot steeper and a lot more off cambered. Um, the boys are sort of scratching their heads and got their arms folded. It doesn't say a lot for my confidence, but I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a go. Boys do this stuff. I don't want to alarm you, but... What did I just say? I don't want to alarm you, but we're going to get all the recovery gear ready now. So get your winch thing ready. I'm going to go get my recovery bag. <laughs> Don't be alarmed, you've got this. No, no, confidence is great to start this track, and now it's just got to be better. All right, give it your best go, mate. Oh God, I'm just going to nudge slowly. If I don't make it the first go, I can go back and have another go. I just want to see how much traction's on this hill. The main issue we're going to have here, of course, is rolling over. Now, the roll will happen onto the driver's side, and there's nothing there to stop you. And that's what we want to try and avoid at all cost. Look at that shot right there. Oftentimes the camera does not show you just how steep something is. But check that out. Might have a winch from here. I was just hoping it would just find some traction miraculously. Right, I'm gonna start winching. These are the times you use your winch. This is why you pay for a winch, why you have it fitted to the front of your vehicle. Okay, that's showing all of us exactly what we've got in front of us. It's always tough being the first driver up any obstacle. And this one, absolute doozy. Oh, what a weapon. A little bit of winching, but I mean, didn't break anything. And we didn't roll our lids. <laughs> that's a big win in my book. Every now and again, somebody's going to come and conquer a mountain. Who is that going to be? <laughs> It wasn't you. I don't care if you win by a millimetre or a mile. Winning's winning. <laughs> uh, it's not a win. It's not even <laughs> remotely close to a win. Okay. Let's give this a go, shall we? I'm going to go into manual mode first and just crawl my way up this first bit. And see how things pan out. I'm, I'm going to say some things that might be helpful, mate. Look, try and keep all your wheels on the ground. Traction's your best friend. And, uh, mate, just control your throttle. Nah, uh, you, you break a few of those rules right now. <laughs> he's on the tree, he's lost traction. You've got this, mate. Yeah, 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 you got it, you got this. That's him, that's him. Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> My plan here was to stick as hard against that left-hand side as I could because I'm trying to look for high spots to climb. Plan. Oh, yeah, there he is, there he is. Yeah, nah, man, your whole guard will come off on that line. That's guard. As you can see, though, I've got just a little too close to the left. Just needs to get off his guard, almost now. Yeah, yeah, you could probably from there. Nah. Yeah, we'll winch. 
this hill's not for everyone. Uh, some people. Well, I think if you've got to go on length driven, definitely winning, definitely winning. In fact, I'm a car length in front and I'm quite a long car, so got this in the bag. Righto, rockets up. This is just beautiful to watch. This is where an auto really comes into its own. It's almost an unfair advantage off-road. His throttle control is just so smooth. He's able to not try and spin tyres, but get traction. And that's what makes or breaks a hill like this. This is good to watch. Rocket really knows how to wheel. To be able to punt that 79 through the tracks like he does is testament to his abilities behind the wheel. Oh, so close. Righto, let's see if he's got it this time. Our rockets come unstuck in exactly the same spot as me. There's an extra lip there that you can't quite see, and all four wheels are trying to climb at the same time. Now, if this hill was less committing, you could probably have a red hot go here and try, but like I've said, the roll opportunity on the driver's side is very real. We have to pull that trailer across a little bit. The best way to do that is to get Chris's vehicle, pulley block, I've done it a few times before now and literally just drag the trailer. We'll need to clear the tree boy about this much. That'll make all the difference. Nick hasn't even gotten to the beginning yet. This is exactly why we're taking camper trailers out here, to see where the breaking point is. So far, we haven't found it. There he is, get into it. Into it. Bit of left. That's him. Yep, exactly the same spot. It's that lip that's probably, catching probably everybody out. If we could get rid of that, I reckon all of us would just about drive up here. Wow, all of us except Sean, eh? <laughs> just joking, mate. No, you can't drive. Oh, yeah, that was all good. That was good. That was good. I just thought I was going to take the suspension out. Come up. Yeah, Chris, coming up, bud. Roger. At this point, we're all aware that this is one insane challenge. It's dangerous and almost impossible to drive. But what happens next is something we just couldn't believe. Oh, yeah! I wasn't cheering, I was feeling your pain. <laughs> Mate! Dude, that was one of the better drives I've seen. Mate, unreal, unreal. You know what that was? That was the way I packed those rocks. If I hadn't, no, it was I had a perfect spot. I, I no, knew you were going to drive. You committed the line. Goes to show what happens when you pick exactly the right line. Way to go, Chris. You proved that this can be done, and that we're not just crazy for trying. And that's what it's all about. We'd really eaten into our first day after that challenge, so we decided to head straight to camp. Well, fellas, in a camp, nice and early today. What do you say we set up and maybe have a cold one? I reckon that's a terrible idea. Yes, mate, of course I want to get into camp and have a beer. Heck yes. This cracking little campsite was actually told to us by a Nowra local. It just goes to show that if you ask around and do a bit of searching, you can still find cracking isolated camp spots and have them all to yourself. I'm not going to tell you where this one is, but I'm going to give you a hint. It's very close to Nowra and you can hear lions at night. There you go. Go and find it for yourself. We may be at camp, but there's no rest for the wicked when you're out four-wheel driving. Chris, do you ever stop working, mate? No, mate, I'm just doing a 30-point safety check. 30-point safety check. Now, I know Superior Off-Road offer that yep. from the showroom it's a down there. pre-trip check. Yep. So, we basically, we are four-wheel drivers, so we check over the vehicles from fluids to bearings to mounts to everything you name it on the four-wheel drive that's, that could go possibly wrong when you're out in the bush. So that's a bit of peace of mind, really, isn't it? It is, mate. And it's free. Free peace it's of mind. It's absolutely free. You just book in, yep. set a time, and we come in and we check her up and go over all. Now, looking at your truck, mate, you are extremely well kitted out. Supercenter products? Yeah, mate, we're the Sydney showroom for Supercenter. Ah, so if you wanted to see the big old swag there, the side yep. awning, like I absolutely love those walls. Yeah, they're awesome, aren't they? If you want to see them in person, you can drop down and have a look. Yeah, what sort of range have you got in there? Pretty mate, much everything? everything. The King, full King's range, the swags, the drawers, the fridges, the whole lot, mate. So people can come down to Smithfield and check out everything, everything and buy from you? It's all on display. Okay, come so and have a look. it's an option to the online? Correct. Oh, mate, that's cool. Finally, the fire's lit, the sun's dropping, and it's time to crack a beer and relax. Don't get too comfortable though, Sean. It's your turn to cook, mate. 
today, guys. Tonight on the menu is an absolute favourite of mine. I don't just cook this one around the campfire. This is one I enjoy at home all the time. What it basically is, is venison wrapped in bacon. Now with the venison, which is deer of course, I'm gonna coat that in a bit of a marinade that I'm gonna make first. I'm gonna put that all together, cook it on the frying pan, then straighten to the coals and it will serve out nice and medium rare. Now with that, I'm just gonna put some veggies in it. This is a real quick and easy meal. So the veggies that I've got are just campers pantry, they're dehydrated vegetables. Now first things first, I'm gonna dive into the Waco and pull out the venison. Now this is some streaky bacon, I'll grab that. Here's a venison backstrap. I've also got another one that I've already chopped up that has been marinating for some time now. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I actually want to just fry the bacon. Now, you don't want to cook it that long, you just literally want to make it slightly brown because it's going to do the majority of the cooking in the camp oven. Now, the marinade I make for the venison is really dead easy and that's why I like it. It also tastes extremely good. You get a bit of soy sauce, but not any salt soy sauce. You do the low sodium, low salt ones. You don't want that one. You want as much salt as possible. And you also want a little bit of the uh, brown sugar. The brown sugar counteracts that salt. So that goes in the bowl. Your venison goes in there. Look, I've done this one for about an hour, but even overnight is better. So eight hours or something like that is perfect. So straight onto the venison, I've got just a piece of meat here. I want to cut this up into smaller pieces. So just little pieces of meat like that, straight into your bowl of marinade. So that's going to sit there now. The bacon, I'm just going to turn that over. All right, that bacon's starting to crisp up. It's not fully cooked, but like I said, the majority of the cooking is going to be done in the camp oven. So this is the venison here? Oh, mate, I'll grab that venison. Yep. That goes straight on, like I said before. You just, oh, yes. You just want to sear this venison on each side, literally for about a minute, maybe, maximum on each side. I'm yep. going to get some water boiling for the veggies. Okay, well, I'm just right. about to start wrapping these in okay, bacon. I'll be, I'll be back in a right sec. On. So now all I literally want to do is grab some bacon and start wrapping it around these pieces of venison. And what I'm going to do to make it all work is get a kebab skewer and just put those straight through. So it holds the bacon in. That's going to go straight in the camp oven. You literally re repeat the process. It doesn't matter how many bits of bacon, you literally, you want to cover the venison in bacon because the, the bacon goes really crispy. All right, that's that last piece in. That is looking absolutely sensational. Lid goes on. You don't really want to go crazy on the coals. 20 minutes is absolute max. You still want it to be nice and red inside and not lose its tenderness. So that's going to go on the fire. Veggies are on. 20 minutes will be eaten. How good's that? Oh, there you go. 25 minutes on the coals. Mate, that looks perfect. You're gonna need these, bro. Oh, yeah. Can you please just Look serve that. that up and stop talking? Do some veggies first. No, go to the meat first. What are you doing? Right. There you go, mate. Look at this. Mm. Look at that. Look at, look at that. One little parcel per yep. plate. Hey, boys. Yo, yo. Come and get dinner. Come on. I wouldn't even tell them, mate. Well, I've got to, don't I? Let <laughs> me get short change there. All right, All right. jump in, boys. In Grab one. Okay. Grab one. Try it, sensational, mate. There's a lot of quiet. That is sensational. Oh, so tender. You cut that with a spoon. Really is very tender. Absolutely superb. There you go, guys. Venison wrapped in bacon. My own little special marinade. It's all quiet. It means it's all good. <laughs> How good is that, boys? It's day two of our weekend adventure, and what a cracking morning to wake up to. Get some in there for the big fella. There you go. There All right, go, mate. That'll do. Today we're heading back into Marila, and we're going to be swapping rocky climbs for mud, glorious mud. We've heard about a track that is notorious because of its huge bog holes. Well, boys, a good way to kick off the morning. A little bit of a mud puddle. Can't even see it yet, mate. It must be tiny. It doesn't look that small, but I'm just going to pot in and um, see what happens. Yeah, let's see if you get stuck. Set the gear pot in. <laughs> the reason we're taking this track is because we want to find an old relic that's been left to rust here in the bush for a very long time. It's an aeroplane from World War II. Oh, it must be some logs down the bottom of that. It's pretty bumpy. Get into it. 
<laughs> I've got a good base, but I don't know what's in there. I think there's some old Toyotas in there somewhere. Yeah, there's some pretty rough stuff in there, I can tell you. know, bog holes are a bit of a guilty pleasure. We're like big kids wanting to get our four-wheel drive dirty, but really, this is a necessity to travel this track for us right now to get to this plane wreckage. Another mud puddle, windows going up this time, looks a little bit bigger. Oh, you feel the traction. You just feel those tyres just doing their thing. STT Pros has really gripped in then, just made light work of it, that's what you want. Yeah, it's not too bad though, Rocket. I reckon you'll eat that, mate. Oh no, Rocket! How good does that 79 sound? I tell you what, I'll never get sick of hearing that. It's actually a tree root just as you come out, and that's what you get hooked on. So come out with just a little bit of steam on you. Nick's taking it in his stride with the Alpha on the back, really making it look easy. I don't know what you're doing, Nick. I reckon you're cheating somehow. I haven't figured it out yet, but you're cheating. <laughs> it's the trailer, mate. It's doing all the work for me, just pushing me right through those things. And so too is Chris. A great drive by everyone. How cool is this little part of the world? I was just driving through here and it reminds me of, we're going through so many different changes in scenery and landscape. It reminds me of the white trunks, remind me of the carry trees of Southwest WA. It really is an amazing and diverse part of the world, south coast of New South Wales. Back on the move now, and we realise that we've only had the entree so far, and here comes the main course. I think I'm just gonna stop and check it out. It looks a little bit deep. Ah, oh, he's got the stick. He's like Richie Benno on the old MCG. <laughs> <laughs> if in doubt, jump out and check these oh, mud puddles because you just, just don't know. Some of them are literally the bottomless. You could lose an entire truck in there. Ah, you'll be right. I'm not even going to get a running start because the third you've got so much torque. Second gear from here. Yep. See you later. I, well, um, I'll be already set up a camp, mate, having a cold beer while you're winching yourself through this messy love, love that confidence. I love that confidence. Is there such a thing as overconfidence, though? It really is. <laughs> I've got faith in the old truck, but I'm just going to get the winch rope out so that if I do get stuck, it's um, going to make it nice and easy to get that winch going and um, pull me to safety nice and fast. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't go anywhere. Didn't even get close. We can hear him laughing from here. No, nah, look, there's not much traction in that. What, you just figured that out now? That just came to an abrupt stop. Yeah. Ah, the joys of driving through mud. I thought I would have made it a little bit further, to be honest. It's got to be one of the stickiest, most disgusting bog holes I've ever been in. I come to an abrupt stop. I reckon the mud, if you had 40 inch tyres, you'd still be stuck. I'm pretty confident I'm going to be out of here in no time at all, which is a good thing because it stinks. Oh, if you can smell. Oh. Now, this is going to be a heavy winch pull, but I've seen the Dominator do this kind of thing time and time again. It's not just the weight of the 60, but it's also the suction of the mud adding to the overall pull. I'm moving. <laughs> you can drive from there. Yeah, I might have to re redo that winch. I'm... Yeah, can I go that other tree? You know, when you're putting this much strain on a winch, winch safety is everything. And that's why we set it up and then we clear right out. And of course, we're using a dampener, which in this case, pretty cool, also doubles as our recovery bag. Yeah. Pretty much drove that bog hole, boys. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Thanks for your help. Just uh, gonna get my winch cable ready because I prefer to be prepared. It's the old Boy Scouts motto. Now, I've seen what Sean has done through there. He's taken that left-hand line, I think, I might just adjust my line ever so slightly and come in maybe just half a four-wheel drive's length to the right-hand side. It still looks super soft, but quietly confident. <laughs> yep, there's no way any of us are getting through this yeah, one. Yeah, it, it slid straight in. Just bounced in there. Yeah. 
I had no choice in that, I was but a, I was but a passenger. It goes to show, it doesn't matter what vehicle you drive, this bog hole, you're not going through it. I think the boys are sort of talking different strategies and stuff, but it's pretty thick. And if Graham tried to do a different line, just slid straight in. So, I don't know, what's your plan? There is no plan. <laughs> <laughs> Point and shoot. Point and shoot. Drive as hard as you can. It's going to be a case of drive, winch, reset and repeat for all of us. But that's okay. Practice that's makes perfect. Footage. Right? What's the plan, Graham? Well, it's a complex plan. Stay with me. I'm going to accelerate in that direction. <laughs> Are you ready to run? So close, I'm going to reverse and give this another go. He got it out. Ah, he did well. I'll give credit. That D-Max, a lot more capable than he is. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm a bit stuck. Oh, Struits <laughs> rocket, that looked impressive. But you didn't get any further than any of us, mate. Out with the winch, big fella. There is no traction here at all. Come on, rocket! Come on, rocket! Come on, rocket! Come on! And it's exactly the same outcome for Nick and Chris. Good effort though, boys. They both really got into that. Okay, we're all through the bottomless pit, but it looks like Rod's got some issues. He hasn't even made it 100 metres up the track. They told me that right front wheel wasn't actually turning so I thought I'd take the hub off and have a quick look. Thanks to Graham's sharp eyes, I've seen a crack through the, the, the inner hub here. So I whipped it off, I'm lucky, I've got a brand new spare one here with gaskets so I'm quickly going to get this all fixed up, get the C-clip on and we'll be off because we're only at the beginning of this track, we've got a lot more to do and I don't want to be doing it in three wheel drive. <laughs> it's a good idea to travel with a few spares on board especially if you've got a hole in your head <laughs> like all of us have. Yep, a little bit more mud, a few ruts. Oh, I thought you were going in there sideways then, mate. <laughs> so did I. This track is really living up to its reputation, and as suspected, the rain we had the other day has really added to the challenge. Well, it is a doozy of a hole, isn't it? Definitely not one here, that one. There. It's areas like this that you often see windy tracks that zigzag all over the place. And that's because people have tried to avoid the bog holes and have created new paths around them. Solid driving. Jeez, talk about a wild ride. However, we're through the worst of it and have reached where we think this relic is hiding. This looks like it, mate. Right here. That's got to be the track. Doesn't see a lot of people, though, does it? It looks very, very thin. What we're actually looking for here, folks, is an old World War II plane wreck, and we got told about it by a local who lives out this way, Jordan. He, uh, he suggested we park along this straight stretch of track and head in on, well, it looks to me like an old goat track through there, but we'll give it a go. Lead on, Chris. That way, he can get bitten by the snake first. <laughs> there are so many stories hidden within the Australian bush. Days long gone have left us with remnants of these stories that are scattered all over the place. With a bit of research, or in our case, local knowledge, you can discover all kinds of interesting things. Hey, very cool. Well, there's not much to show of it right now, but it was a uh, commercial flight that was flying from Sydney down to Melbourne. And uh, it's not a terribly romantic story in the sense that they weren't at war, they didn't get shot out of the sky or anything, that's foggy day and they flew too close to the earth. Planes don't like that and it crash landed out here. What is cool though is that it was found because when the pilot hit the eject button and flew off out that way with his parachute, he landed in a farmer's field and the farmer said, well I'm not supposed to have a parachute in my field. And so they went looking for a plane. And that's exactly why these tracks that we're driving today are here, because that tracks they put in to look for this plane way back then. I think that's about it for this little thing, it's plain to see that we should move on. I will. Uh, <laughs> I will pilot us in this direction and we will eject our way along. Now the end of this track is actually a cracking lookout. A really good lookout, the end of this track. Not too far away and we've reached another of the wonders that we wanted to visit. Just check this out. 
How good is this spot, mate? These huge valleys were formed millions of years ago when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Absolutely amazing. Come on, folks, get out of the city and come and see this great land of ours that we call Australia. Well, we haven't got any horses. We've got plenty of horsepower. What do you reckon we're going? Kick them in the guts. Absolutely, mate. I'll yeah? See if I start. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. We're back on the bog-ridden track and it's not letting up. We've got to continue this way so that we can reach our camp for the night. Oh, straight in, mate. It's actually quite deep but a firm little base on it. Come on through, fellas. Come on, traction control. Yes! Easy. Does it easy. Up and to it. Nice and good. Come on through this. Right behind you, mate. Not much further, and the track really opens up, which means we're nearly at camp. It's a cool little spot. It's actually a cracking campsite. It really pays. Drop into the pub, have a beer, and get chatting with the locals. You'll find some gold. This is one such example. This, again, is another site that was told to us by locals to the area. As good as the driving gets out this way, I tell you what, it's this time of day that I just love. Sun's going down, camp's set up, it's time to crack a coldie and have a good old laugh around the campfire. It really doesn't get any better than this for me, and I reckon you all agree. It's our final day of the trip, and we're keen to get packed up and get on the road. You know, one of the reasons why I love sleeping on a stretcher, and yeah, it's really comfortable, that's a given, but I love the fact when I am rolling my swag up, I don't get a lot of grass, I don't get any dew on the bottom of my swag, the swag goes away in its bag, super clean. It's just a little thing, but the more you camp, well, I suppose the more you appreciate little things like that. Well, this is the unglamorous side of camping, but geez, I wish more people would partake in it. Half of this is our rubbish and half of this is the rubbish we picked up from the campsite behind us that we stayed at last night. I don't even know what to say. Just put your rubbish in a bag and take it out with you. If everyone did that, we just wouldn't have a problem. I don't think tracks would get closed. There'd be just, there's so many positives to just doing this. Another positive, of course, is having a camper trailer with a whole heap of storage up the front here. So, pack that in there, pop it down, rubbish is gone. How simple is that? You're just about ready to go, mate? Yep. Final zip Go. Cool, cool. <laughs> Leave you to it. Ah, planning the day, mate. I oh, am, yeah, mate. Look, I've just come across Monkey Gum Trail on the VMS. Yep, proper track, mate. Proper track. We'll That's be on it most of the day, I'd reckon. Really long track. It's a long track, yeah. It goes for, it goes for a fair height. But the, the beauty is right at the top, one of the most spectacular lookouts you'll yeah. ever see. It is quite a long track, actually. It is. It goes, it goes a long way. I'm going to make a waypoint. Yep. What do you say we point the trucks in that direction? Put a waypoint at the river crossing at yep. the start and we'll just head for that and then we'll get from there. Easy. You follow your nose from there, really. Okay. Straight up. Too easy, mate. All right, see if this thing will start, mate. That's, <laughs> that's the first. Come on, baby. <laughs> Today we'll be taking on Monkey Gum Fire Trail, and it's an A-grade tough track. With that in mind, Nick's going to leave the camper right here and pick it up a bit later. Monkey Gum, here we come. We're still on Mint Brush at the moment, which is a road that accesses Monkey Gum, but soon enough we'll be crossing a river and merging onto Monkey Gum, and that's where things are going to get exciting. An interesting day. Now it's been quite a while since I was last here, and it looks like it's even tougher than it was before. And that echoes some of the stories that we were hearing from locals, saying that the ruts have gotten bigger than they've ever seen them. I might just let you get ahead a bit, mate. You're spitting a lot of rocks back at me. But, all right, you really scrambled some traction up through there. One other thing I really love about monkey gum is that at the top, there's one of the most spectacular lookouts you'll ever see. It's almost like you've got a reward for making it that far. Now, Sean's never seen the lookout, so of course, I'm really keen to get up there in daylight so that he can check it out. All good, boys. Yeah, just really, really rough. Right now, this feels like the calm before the storm, which is strange because the weather is beaut today. This is what four-wheel driving is all about, getting out with your mates or your family and just enjoying the weather and the Australian bush. That was a big one, Sean, eh? Yeah, welcome to the Dirty 30, mate. Get up back here. 
Obstacles like this are exactly why you don't go flying down these tracks at high speed. Ah, uh, yeah, this is, I, this is what I call the start of monkey gun once you hit this creek. This is it. This is the start of monkey gun, and it's always an exciting feeling. You know what? I reckon Sean is stoked that he can now, well, tick this one off his list. Monkey gum is steep, but what it's really renowned for is its ruts. They are huge. Most of them are super off camber as well, and then throw into the mix some massive rock steps, and well, you've got monkey gum. Uh, what do we got here? It's like a bit of a rut. Yep, big rut, actually. It's a bit of a rut here, boys. I'm gonna take the right-hand line and um, I might even lift a tire. That's probably gonna be an understatement, but I'll give it a go. Yeah, copy that, mate. Almost straight away, and Sean's got a problem. That's quite a hole, mate. I think my red was working. Nah, mate, your rear locker is not working. A negative, that's a negative. No, 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 let me jump out and have a look at the front. Hang on. I've just spotted right there that there's a locker not working. There's no way he's getting that drive to the front. I don't know, it appears that Sean has lost four-wheel drive. Like, completely lost four-wheel drive. I don't think anything's broken. I think it's um, not engaged. Vacuum or electric because I think the centre diff lock's not going. Chris is to the rescue, and that's where it's great having a qualified mechanic on the trip. This is really where people like Chris really come in handy. I mean, Knows these vehicles and all sorts of four-wheel drives on the back of his hand. He's worked on that many four-wheel drives. You know, not just any old vehicles, but four-wheel drive specific. So that's that's a difference, and that's why he's in there. And hopefully, we can get this thing to engage in a four-wheel drive because something tells me we might need it. A monkey. Yeah, it's reckon? not even started yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris has done it. He sorted it out. Now let's see if it makes a difference. There we go. Yeah, look at that. What a difference. Shono is back in the game. That's much better. Makes a big difference. I tell you what, one tough track. Monkey gum, it's an iconic, it's an absolute classic in this part of the world, and for good reason too. Really tough track, really challenging, but I've got to be honest, I thought I'd struggle a lot more than I have. I put that down almost 100% to the automatic gearbox and the D-Max. Now, a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, it's throttle control. It just allows me to be so precise on the throttle, which means that I can pick a line really easily, but I can also maintain momentum without using, or losing, I should say, traction and creating wheel spin. Another really cool fact about the auto in the D-Max is a thing called grade logic. What that means is that the vehicle will actually hold onto the gear that you need when going uphill, and it won't run away from you on the downhills. Also, we've got a bit of gadgetry called Revtronic. That means that you can still manually select any one of the five gears in the five-speed sequential Triptronic shift. Of course, what that means is that you've got complete control over your gear selection. Oh, this little bit's tough right through here. You know, I really firmly believe that modern automatic gearboxes, like the one in the D-Max, can turn just about anyone into a professional four-wheel driver. As we continue to climb higher, of course the track gets steeper, and that means more runoff when it rains. More runoff means more erosion. More erosion, of course, means deeper ruts. Holy sweet jeepers! <laughs> oh, I love this truck. He's such a weapon. Good drive, mate. Good drive. Oh, he's just... You have so much fun, you literally just have to hold on and see what happens. It's so much fun. Oh, 
Oh, now that is a wheel lift. Oh, struth, mate. Yeah, this is monkey gum through and through. These ruts are unavoidable. There's a couple of different lines you can take, and you'll see me taking some to the left, Whoa, some to the right, right, and the boys are picking their lines as well. It really is about knowing your vehicle and how far you can push it. But this is exactly why we came to do this track. Right, you can tell straight away there's big side angles, big ruts, and this is not even the start of the hard bit. A lot of monkey gum is first gear, low range, slow crawling. That's because you've Big got to pick ruts. your line and just take Massive it so very ruts. carefully through these ruts. Also, a good solid suspension setup is kind of critical here. I'm running raw on the D-Max, and of course, sean has got it on a Dirty 30 as well, and you'll see the amount of flex we're getting. That's enabling us to keep our tyres on the ground as much as possible. Yeah, that's not too bad. Come on up. You know what I say? It's not too bad. I don't know what just happened. It all happened so quick. <laughs> All right, let's give it a go. I'm on my way. Nope. Okay, I'm just going to adjust my line ever so slightly. Sean has just run down to give me a bit of eyes on, a bit of a spot. It's exactly why taking mates out on the tracks can be so helpful. I hope they popped up over the boat. Good spotting! Good spotting! We're getting closer and closer to the top. However, we've got a section coming up that will certainly get the heart racing. I reckon it's probably worth jumping out here and finding the best way to tackle this. Well, this is my memory of the track is this is the beginning of the end. What we've already done is kind of that last little pinch to the top. Yep. We do this, I think there's sort of an easy bit coming up and then one last pinch through what I sort of remember being two sheer cliff faces and we stop there. No. Because everyone goes up through those and keeps going and they miss what I reckon is the best part of monkey gum. So, okay, let's drive this first. Are you going to do this line here or <laughs> Well, what? there's two lines. Um, I reckon this let's is Let's have a go at this one. We have come this far to check yeah, it out. Yeah, there's a few little bits, but I'll just... <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly right, that's what's going to happen. Let's go. I think. I'll watch you do it. <laughs> Yeah. We'll see how he goes up here first. Oh, nope. Oh, yeah. Oh. There's that tree root right there. Oh, you can really see how close we're going to doing panel damage here. No, 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 no. You're going to do damage, dude. You're on that route. Oh, the car's on it. Can you see that? No. I think forward's your only option. You don't want to be there. Yeah, yeah that's an angle. Try going backwards. Pretty good! Get out of there! Huh? Do you reckon I can go a bit more right hand down? Then you'll just fall further into it, I reckon. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you'll fall from a greater height. <laughs> you can try. Have a go. He's keen to have another crack. <laughs> this time, he's going to go he's further right, away else. from that tree root. Let's see how he goes. He's going to go higher up on the right hand side. My feeling is it's just going to give him further to fall. A go! Yes! How good are you? So much more than a car. What an animal. Absolute bloody animal. Don't know about you boys, but I like my panels too much for that one. That's the benefit of sending Shawno up first. We could see there that back quarter on what's going to be all of our trucks is just going to be dented fully in. It went in about that far on his canvas side. You can imagine if that was a glass window or a panel. Nah, that's just too much damage, so I think all of us are going to take this. I don't think this is anything to sneeze at. No. no I think we've got to have our work cut out for us here too, but I'm going to take the left-hand line here and see how we go. 
Even though we all took that left hand line, it didn't stop us from having fun on the last few little step ups. Monkey gun, what an epic bit of track. A true iconic that I reckon everyone has to do at least once. We've all made it. We're at the lookout and on a clear day like today, it's just breathtaking. Secrets of the South Coast, what do you think? Mate, the South Coast have been insane. Yeah. Tough tracks, yeah. three wheels, two wheels, a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of three and two for you, yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, Monkey Gum, this one we've finished on, it, it, to me, I'd even go so far as to say it's one of my favourite tracks in Australia to be in my top five without a doubt. Absolute top it's five fun. track. It's yep. hard, it's technical, yep. Yep. it's got everything that makes a good track. Yep, lookouts. We've seen it. the South Coast. You know, people go all over the place to go on holiday. You could come here and have an absolute blast. I must admit, though, I didn't think the South Coast had the tough four-wheel driving. Oh, it does. Oh, man. Yeah, it really does. Oh, no shortage of that. And we've still got this, these things out here we haven't even touched on yet. Uh, we'll I love it. Back. I'll be back. I'll, I'll be back. back. Robbie, sure. you coming back? Oh, absolutely. Next really booked his ticket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure, I hope you can get the car started. <laughs> Chris, I'll be back. Folks, you might see us here. You know the saying by now. We do it enough. Sure, no, you can do it if you like. We'll see you again on Full Drive Action. Yee. See you later. I'm Graham Cahill and um, yeah, I'm from WA in case you didn't know, over there, it's West is best, I always say that, you, you hear me say that. Anyway, yeah it does, but Western Australia, that's right, West is best, what can I say, what can I say, West is best, always in WA, love WA, oh, WA is good, WA, WA. How cool is this little part of the world, I was just driving through here and it reminds me of, we're going through so many different changes in scenery and landscape, and it reminds me of the white trunks, remind me of the Gary trees of Southwest WA. Didn't you? I didn't want to go that far. Shut up. You guys might be laughing now, but... Ooh, that gets a heavy jeans up here. Oh, yeah, like a tiger. Now, of course, construction makes a big thing. Now, I'm talking three-ply minimum. Now, this one here is only two-ply. It does have a flower pattern. Now, it's going to give you a little bit more grip than normal. Now, two-ply, it's just not quite strong enough, especially if you had a night in the curry. Not, not good. So, always go for three-ply. And that way you'll get good traction out in the bush. How much left in it? I could have. Oh. <laughs> with the grey hairs comes wisdom. With wisdom comes age. With age comes beauty. Hey? That's a, that's a good say. You, you sound terrible, mate. You're so 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 Dirty now, I know you're really dirty. The function whereby I can even start my main battery. Lost the ability, it's too hot. I need to drink some chili. Mm. Hot chili woman. Ooh, yeah. That's a little 30 wind dance. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>